Belgium has no countries It isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for No religion to Imagine all the people Living life in peace You, you may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you'll join us And the world will be as one Good morning and welcome. I'm Reverend Therese. That could be our prayer, couldn't it? Let the world live as one. I've spent this last week over in Orlando at Christ Unity Church. That's their name. And in the midst of all the branding and everything that's been going on over the last 12 years in unity, they decided they would keep their name Christ Church. Which means when people go to that church, they're going to hear about Christ, which is a word that sometimes scares people, doesn't it? I was asked to teach a class on Friday that started Monday. I got the syllabus on Friday for Monday. And it was Jesus' teachings, which, you know, we were like, well, we can do this, you know, and we know it, we've learned it, we've been studying it, I've been in unity for 30 years. And then I read what the book was, and I got it on, on Sunday night, and the book was all about the historical Jesus, which I've studied, that had the real uncovering and the unpacking of what really did happen historically. And what we know, most of the world just follows what they read. There's not much fact-finding. But in unity, we invite you, which is part of the metaphysical process and all the other processes we use, to unpack it and see. And so I've studied the West Star. That's what it's called, the Jesus Seminar, where theologians of all the different uh, faiths came together to see just exactly what did Jesus say. Two things that are written in the red letter version of the King James Bible, you know, which people will say, well, that was Jesus' Bible, because you know that's what he said. Two of those things for sure they know. So you can imagine these students who haven't taken any other Bible class come and they were like, What? Then what did he do? What did he say? Well, what we have to remember is that it was written so far long after he died. And so what I decided is, well, what would Jesus and Charles and maybe Myrtle say about what's happening in Orlando, in our world, how we're dealing with it? So how perfect the song that we could imagine peace. What would Charles and, you know, so it could be WWJC, which someone might say Jesus Christ, or it could be Jesus and Charles. <laughs> Too long for the sign. <laughs> So one of the things that I do when I teach spiritual intelligence is get yourself a guiding question so that when life hits you, no matter the situation, you can get into your center and then from that center respond versus react. So the guiding question is, what would blank do? You choose. It could be Jesus. It could be Charles. It could be Muhammad. It could be your mother. It could be your grandmother. It could be your favorite minister. Whatever it is. But what would... <laughs> this person do, which brings me back to center. And why not have that conversation? Why not understand? But first, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we talk about in unity as our seven centers. And this is, once we, and we know these, hearing, wait, first it starts with seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, and feeling. We know those are our five senses, yes? We have two more that sometimes we forget about, and they are intuition, which is, of course, in our solar plexus and in our gut, and then the mystical, the ability that we have inherent as a child of God to communicate with God, which is why 
at, how old was I when I made confession? I was probably like 10, 12, something like that, that I was like, why do I have to go in this box as a little Catholic girl to talk to God and ask forgiveness and whatever else I made up every Sunday, Saturday when I went? <laughs> because, you know, I didn't know that if I would change my mind and maybe stop those behaviors, then life could be different. So this is what I'm asking for you to remember about yourself. You see, you hear, you taste, you smell, and you feel. So go a step further. Seven is a crucial number in unity and in metaphysics. Intuition, that's your gut, and also your ability to communicate with God. So John tells us that God is love, and love is God. Right, we've heard that in the Bible. First of all, Acts and all the epistles were written before the Gospels were written. Everybody breathe. And Mark was the first Gospel, not Matthew. So maybe we'll have a Bible class and see, because it's so exciting to see, okay, well, he must have got that from him because he wrote it first and all of that. So it's quite exciting to understand where all these things we've heard about all our life actually came from. God is love and love is God. It's in John. We love John in unity because it's very feely and Nice, and it's a good, good um, kind of a gospel for us. So what Charles Fillmore says is the love of God for his children, his children, because, of course, way back then when Charles was talking, he gave a personality kind of a trait to God, but we don't do that today all these years later. So God's children are loved beyond description. A love so tender, he says, and so deep that it cannot be mentioned in the same breath with ordinary love known by this world. We've talked about that, right, around Valentine's Day, and every time we talk about love, I love you, I love spaghetti, and I love the ocean. It's a sloppy word. So when we think about the love of God, we use a capital L. Use a capital L. The great love of being is deeper and wider than the thoughts and the words of us people. Bigger and wider. So how do we describe it? And he goes on to say that we have to awaken within ourselves. So if you need to come to class on Tuesday or Thursday night or come for meditation on Wednesday, do that. So you can have these awakenings. And what happens is we awaken to the capacity to feel love that maybe we've never understood before. And we do that by having a relationship with God. Another thing that we find that Jesus said, I won't give you all the statistics on did he say it or not, doesn't matter. <clears throat> we think he did. Seek first the kingdom of God, and then almost simultaneously said the kingdom of God is within you. So talks on truth, another one of Fillmore's book, I have proved to my own satisfaction, he said, and he loved being right, Mr. Fillmore, that when Jesus said this, he meant it literally and not figuratively. So it's true. Seek first the kingdom, and where is the kingdom? Within us. And we all get it. Everybody gets it. Not just those who study, those who don't study. Everybody has it no matter what. It's just whether or not we actually step forward and into it. He said there is within everyone a place, a conscious sphere of mind. And I think it's interesting we talk about spheres and energy and all of that today. And this stuff was written in the 20s and 30s. We are all as free to use God as we are free to use the principles of math or of music. Do we know that? Do we get it? We have to move from our head to our heart. God is principle, law, intelligence, love, and life itself. We make the choice to understand, which means we stand under, knowing what this is, and utilize God in our thinking, speaking, and actions. Bottom line, we get to choose. I love that about unity, because if you aren't happy, change your mind. If you don't like that answer, choose another one, right? Choose another action. Choose another person to go to lunch with. You don't have to go with, to lunch with people you don't like. It's okay to say, no, thank you very much. Another thing that Jesus said, I am in my Father, and you and are in me, and I am in you. Again, giving the male attribute to what we call God. You and are in me, and I am in you. Each of us, we are all in each other. And how do we know that, and how do we stand together? That's what was really evident 
in Orlando this week. The church was about two miles from Pulse. And so, of course, because I used to be a journalist, I needed to go and see what that looked like. They are now going to make it ground zero in Orlando, like the World Trade Center was, is in New York City. So we're all in each other. And what Charles says again in Talks on Truth, the gospel of Christ Jesus is that all people, he doesn't say some, he says all, shall become God incarnate. We are the ones expressing. We are the one living. We are the one being God. That's what we're witnessing, even from Merritt Island, as to what's happening over in Orlando. Amazing, the sense of peace that's happening there. Not that individually folks aren't having the little question of what's next, but as they uncover the fact that it wasn't about terrorism, it was about this gentleman, and I call him that because at one point I'm sure he was to somebody, he, had an, he was fighting with the truth of who he was in himself, knowing that in his religion it was against God to be gay. That's the reason. It's not about the fact that of, his, of his religion. And so then we all get to breathe a little bit like, oh, what do we hide from? What do we not share about ourselves? So Fillmore goes on to say that Jesus lived his divinity. He had a human moment. He had a divine moment. Don't you have a human moment and then a divine moment, moment after moment after moment every day? We do. That's what we do. We realize our Christ potential, which means we come from the highest and the best of us, and we get to be just like Jesus. That was another thing that kind of scared the class. So you're saying that we're like Jesus. And I'm like, yes. And they're like, oh taking copious notes, you can see, like, I'm going to ask somebody else to see if this is true. <laughs> you know, well, luckily, they had several other Bible classes during the day. So by the end of the week, they were walking quite tall. So our mission is to express all that we can imagine God to be. Don't we do that? When we hear Paul Aiden last week create a song based on the message, is that not a wonderful thing to celebrate? He goes on to say, let this be your standard of achievement. Never lower it. If you imagine that it is possible with God, then it is possible for you. Because God is where? Always with us. Nothing separate from us. Gives us strength and courage to do things sometimes. It could even be audacity to do things. I like that word. Jesus said, I can do all things through the one who strengthens me. And who is that? It's us coming to our Christ potential to do that. And can't you see that that's how they're handling it again over in Orlando? They have had, uh, when I arrived Sunday night, they were having just about a mile from the place where I was staying, one of the minister's houses, um, they had 5,000 people in a park on Sunday night. It was hot. It's been hot, hasn't it? And they all gathered peacefully. There was no trash in the park after they left because everybody brought, took with them whatever they brought. Peace is happening. So Charles Fillmore says, as the will of God, each of us represents the I am identity. Remember what I am means. Intention, um, attention, manifestation. So we get to make it happen. Be teachable, be open, and be receptive. That's what I have to remind myself every day, too. How can we see different viewpoints, receive new understandings, and not get stuck in our belief system, or what Martha Creek would call our BS. Right? We do, don't we? I can because I am. So I want you to say that with me. I can because I am. And now with our playground voices. I can because I am. So I got to sit with my little granddaughter who's two on Friday night. And of course, she's all into knowing that she's in charge. Yeah. I do Nana, and she, her voice raises, and you know, she's a little, tiny little peanut thing. I do Nana, I can. I do Nana, uh, okay, all right, you know. She almost thinks she can change her own diaper, not quite, but she just thinks she can almost, and she's not quite yet to the pull-up stage, so. She was just so fun, and she, we were doing her nails, so that means you have to put your hand, you have to be quiet. She's like, move Nana, move Nana, and I said, no, we keep our hands still while we're doing our nails. Okay, Nana, you know, and then she just got peaceful and we painted her nails pretty and pink, you know. So I can because I know I am. 
We go back to ourselves and the truth of who we are anytime there's a doubt. He goes on to say, Filmer, I live in a universe of workable potentiality. That comes from Christian healing. Imagine that we get to do that. That's why it's so great that the, the um, power this month is imagination, because worry is the greatest misuse of imagination. When we worry, what are we doing? Another one that he said is, judge not, or you will be judged. Fillmore thought and taught that spiritual discernment reveals the knowledge as intelligence. Wait, let me say this again. He taught that spiritual discernment reveals that knowledge and intelligence, which we call IQ, are auxiliary to understanding, which would be EQ. Now, when you look at that, you know, in the Maslow kind of power of triangle, it's physical, then intellectual, then emotional. So really, if we put aside our intellect, we're going to get to our feelings, right and left brain as well, yes? And if we come from understanding, he says, then we're going to have right relations. I love how, you know, I'm getting more and more as I get older and, or longer in the movement, that the way he spoke was really quite poetic. It enhances the ability to lay hold of right relationships. Those relationships that serve you, that make you the best you, that show you who you are when you forget, hold up the mirror, give you a hand. How are we having those right relations? He said, it's the highest and the best for all of humanity, a quality so pertinent at this moment in history. So he was writing back in the 20s and 30s, and it's still so true today, isn't it? And I have to throw in a fable. There was a fable about a man who was condemned because he was so hurtful to society because he kept judging everybody. And so he was brought in front of a judge and was condemned to seeing all other men and women only as skeletons. Have you seen that thing on Facebook? And it says, you know, a Jewish person, a Catholic person, a Lutheran person, male and female, and they're just a bunch of skeletons. So when we don't look at all this outer stuff, glasses, no glasses, hair, no hair, long, short, tall, whatever, then we see just the truth of each other. So this guy had to just see only the skeleton, so he did not get involved with the outer. Does anybody ever get involved with judging the outer? I hope not yet today. It's only 1030. <laughs> it's 1035. But it happens, even if we're just having a discerning moment. Whatever measure you use, giving large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. This is not a threat. It's in Luke. In Malachi, the, what we use actually for the song, bring in the full tithe to the storehouse and prove me now. So I love what Fillmore says. It's based on the law that cannot fail. And it is the surest way, he says, ever to find and demonstrate plenty for it is God's own law and the way of tithing and giving. By the act of tithing, we, now I've read this book many, many times, have not seen it till this time. It's his little book on prosperity. By the act of tithing, we make God our partner. Now I know I've read that, but I didn't realize it. I, I got a partner. I don't need a banker. Well, I might need a banker, but you know, how about we know that every time we partner up with God, then the financial transactions, he says, keep the channel open. So as we give, so we receive. Not only of our, of our financial, but our time and our treasures, all sorts of treasures. Did you notice all the um, beautiful vision boards as we came in? How cool. People visioning. So how are you doing that? See yourself as a steward, he said, of all that God has to give. It kind of makes it all a little bit different, doesn't it? It's not really ours. We're just the steward to give thereof. Are you okay with that? Are you willing to give what is yours to give? And Mark says, all things are possible to those who believe. And Luke, again written after Mark, says, the things that are impossible with men, people, are possible with God. We've heard those things. Fillmore says, infinite possibilities are available to those who believe in infinite possibilities. Wow, that's profound. We can understand that, can't we? Sometimes we don't always understand what Papa Charles was saying. The things that are impossible to us personally, once we step into partnership with the greater reality, so that would be a capital G and a capital R, become possible. 
Even the word itself says, I'm possible. So are you knowing? Are you believing? Are you acting as if? And we say sometimes we have to faith it until we make it. And that's all right. Pray. Lots of talk about prayer. In Mark it says, Therefore I say whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. The caveat there is it's on God's time, not on our time. Anybody else get a little impatient? Yes. So what, what he says in Talks on Truth, Filmer says, Jesus prayed much by himself and spent long hours in silent communication. So did Mr. Fillmore, lots of hours a day, six to eight hours a day, what he was calling meditation. You know, other people like Rosemary, his granddaughter, might have said he was sleeping, but we're not to judge. Jesus was in the silence with God, getting the power and the wisdom necessary to do Jesus' work. Do you do that? That's what I had to do, literally. After I left you all on Sunday, all, driving to Orlando, all right, I'm going to be able to teach this class. All right, I'm going to be able to teach this class. All right, I'm going to be able to teach this class. So in our prayers, we meet God, the God of our understanding, face to face, issue to issue, no, heart to heart, knowing that as we get clear where the assurance needs to come from, it's there within us then, all of a sudden. I was able to walk in on Monday morning and pretend like I knew what I was doing. As we allow our Christ consciousness within to flow forth, we get tapped into the universal mind with a capital M. And remember, we pray to change who? Ourselves. Not to change circumstances, not to change things. That's why the sign outside says we're play, praying with Orlando, holding Orlando in prayer. We can't change. What we can do is change ourselves, and then that emanates out and changes everyone else. And faith. Not only one of our 12 powers, but probably the surest way that we will stay on purpose. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. Move, you can say to it, and it will move. Now, what are mountains? Today it was just, what shoes am I wearing? That was the mountain. Where are the black shoes? In which suitcase? Under which bed? Where are my black shoes? So the mountains show up depending upon how you choose to see them as so. And then we get to say, out of the way, I'm finding them. Or whatever it is that you say when you're going to do what you need to do. And that's from Matthew. So Charles and Myrtle together had great faith. Huge amounts of faith. They did all their work through faith. They founded unity through their faith. They taught through their faith. The correspondence schools, everything else that they kept developing. They healed not only themselves, others through their faith. And they overcame many things through faith. Some of them were just really harsh winters in Missouri, going from Kansas City, probably only about 15 or 17 miles out to the farm, but imagine with no highway how you would do that. And many, many times they came to a place where they thought, how are we going to do this? We can't go on. And one specific one was when they didn't have enough money to make payroll. They didn't know how they were going to pay their bills. And so someone, very smart person, in the accounting department said, well, let's pray that the money holds out. And Myrtle said, oh, no. Let's us, let us pray that the faith, that our faith holds out. Pretty simple things. Do we get to the point where we think we're going to solve the problem, or do we take a moment to pray? Do we remember the truth of who we are, where our strength comes from? Do we use all of our own senses that we have and include the intuition and include the knowing that we can have this relationship with God should we choose? What I was able to witness through the church in Orlando, and the outpicturing that went into their community is that they know that if they are the peace that shows up, that they are the ones who show up with music, the ones who show up with food and water, peace happens. And so it's not something that's just going to quit. They still need food. They still need water and all of that. And now they need prayers. We need prayers for the families who are doing the work that they do. So it's time for us to get back to what would 
blank do in your life? What's your guiding question? So let us pray. Thank you, God. For Jesus, who is the way shower, the, the road map, the human that saw his divinity that we use as our elder brother. And for Papa Charlie or Mr. Fillmore, whatever you call him, for, and Myrtle, who both knew the truth of what was the truth within themselves. Thank you for them bringing it forth for us so that we all get to live in the truth and the knowing that we are also the begotten, that we also have everything that we need on God's time, in God's time. As we see it so, it is. Thank you for the shift we have in our consciousness that allows us to serve here at Unity of Merritt Island, knowing that as we give, so we receive. And thank you for our faith, knowing that as we see it so, it is, remembering the truth of who we are, we are grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen.